I'm Seth with Land the House. This is the Lytime 12.8 volt lithium iron phosphate battery rated at 165 amp hours, which is 2,112 watt hours. It does have an app that you can download. It functions with all of the smart batteries from Lytime, and it gives you things like the charging rate, the temperature of the battery, and then you can see how the cells are performing as well. So let's go ahead and open that now. When you first open the app, you do have to set up an account, which does not take much time at all. So as you can see, my battery is already indicating that it is connected over here. I'm gonna click into this. It says the state of charge is 27%, and let's find the temperature down here negative 4C. Now I don't know what 4C is. 24.8 degrees is the current temperature of the battery. Well below the 40 degrees required to charge the battery. So we should be good to go to set up the charger and watch this heat up before it begins to actually charge the cells. The app is pretty cool. You can see 13.2 volts is the battery voltage. It has currently got 44.5 amp hours in there. The self-heating is not turned on, but the balance, the cells, and the BMS are all in the green. Now, if I were to click on any of those, it would just tell you good or normal. So there you go. I'm gonna use the Lightime charger to get this battery started here with the self-heating mode and also charging the cells. Now, if you've never used one of these smart batteries, you have to wake them up from shipping. And you can do that by either hooking up a charger like this or using a solar charger. I tried this with my solar charger and it was not designed to wake up lithium iron phosphate batteries. So I did have to use this one from Lightime. And it took about three seconds for it to wake the battery up. So you connect the terminals here and then it's got this giant Anderson plug. Get that connected. And then here is the Lightime charger. It's a 10 amp. The charger is turned on and the light is indicating charging, but it's actually not charging. Let's go into the app and see what I mean. If I pull the app up, you can see the temperature is now negative three degrees Celsius. So it's already warming up a little bit. You can see how the heating option down here has uh, indicated that heating is on. It says your battery is cozying up, the self heating is on. So at negative 1.3 amps and uh, negative 17 watts, you can see it fluctuates back and forth. Uh, estimated time around 30 minutes before this is uh, ready to be actually charged. So we will let this sit on the charger. Uh, you can already tell negative two degrees. So the heating element inside of here is warming up the cells, but it's gonna be a little while before it's ready. When the internal temperature of the battery hits between four and five degrees Celsius or 39 and 41 degrees, the charger will switch between charging and heating up and then it'll finally kick over into completely just charging the battery. So if you look at the app now, the temperature is now five degrees C or 41 degrees Fahrenheit and charging is being done. So the battery is now it's at a charge of 30% and we've got 10.5 amps going in, 140 watts. So it's gonna take 11 hours, but this will be fully charged at that point. Now, I actually can take this outside and hook it up to my solar power, and it should charge even faster than that. So let's do that right now. I've got a 400 watt solar panel with a charge controller and the battery. Let's go ahead and get the system up and running here. Now if I load up the app, I can see that I have 340 watts coming in at about 25 amps from this solar panel. That is a whole lot faster than the previous charger inside. So I'm gonna let this sit here for a while and charge up to 100% and then we will do our discharge test on this battery. Every single day these mysterious clouds form over in this direction and they seem to come behind these planes and they just last all day and spread across the sky and ruin my solar panel tests.
I charged this battery mostly with solar and then topped it off with the battery charger and it is at 100% state of charge. Let's do a discharge test now. To run this test, I've got a 2000 watt inverter and a simple heater. Like I mentioned before, this battery has a 2112 watt hour rating. So we're going to be running this heater on the medium setting. And then what we can do is uh, time how long this battery runs on that heater. And that will give us the watt hours. So uh, normally whenever you connect an inverter to a battery like this, you should use a resistor between these two legs to prevent this from having a spark. I can't find my resistor. And so there may be a little spark here. Yeah, not bad. I'm going to plug this heater up. I'm going to turn on the inverter. Now I know the battery is fully charged. This says uh, 13 volts here on the inverter, but I know the battery is at 13.4. So what I'm going to do is turn this heater on. Oh, it's already running. Huh. Let's go ahead and start my stopwatch. This is running at 840 watts. However, I want to load up the app and see what the battery is putting out here. I've got the app loaded. I'm going to click into our battery here. We are at a 99% state of charge. This should run for two hours and some change. We've got 960 to 967 roughly watts going out. There's 7973. I believe we used a value of about 965. We should be good to call this test. So let's see what happens in about two hours. The battery discharge test is performing well. We're at two hours and nine minutes. The battery has now gotten down to 6% state of charge. My inverter voltage display says 11.5. Here on the battery, it says 11.8. So these two are running pretty close to where they should be. So it looks like we should have about 0.12 hours remaining. So not very much more time. Now, as far as the power draw, I'm seeing anywhere between uh, 965 watts to almost uh, 980. So I still think that if we say 965, we will be good on this test. So. I will show you here in just a moment what happens when this battery reaches 0% state of charge. The system just shut down. The state of charge is zero here on the app. And we have a time of two hours and 13 minutes. You can also see down here that there is a cycle times of two on the app. Now, from my test before, I noticed that the BMS goes under protection for the low voltage. And in just a moment, the Bluetooth is going to shut off from the battery and disconnect from the app. So keep that in mind that when the battery does drop too low, the app will stop responding. This battery is rated at 2,112 watt hours. So if we ran this for two hours and 13 minutes, and the power draw was somewhere between 958 to 980, and it was fluctuating back and forth. So we can probably just say 965 was a kind of mid-range power draw. Um, so that's what I'm gonna go with here. So uh, two hours and 13 minutes would be 133 minutes times 965 watts of draw divided by 60 is 2,139 watt hours. So uh, the variation in the power draw is what's gonna be the difference there between the actual um, the 2,112 watt hours. So I would say this thing has at least performed at spec, but probably even better than that, which is pretty awesome. I will have a link to this battery in the description down below if you wanna check it out. I'll also leave a link to the Lightime battery charger in the description below as well, because when you first get this battery, it is gonna be in storage mode and it is gonna have like three volts across the terminals and it won't wake up to a standard solar charger either. So uh, you can do the charger like I've got here, or you can connect this to another battery of similar style that is awake and has at least 12 volts on it. And that should also wake it back up. So uh, you can 
use the charger, use a different battery, or if your solar charge controller has the ability to wake up a lithium battery, you can use that as well. I'm Seth with Land the House, and I'll see you in the next video.